So first, let's talk a little bit about the pre-plant incorporated herbicides. These would be the dinatural aniline class of chemistry, things such as trifluralin or prow, also marked as pendimethalin. Uh, both of these uh, herbicides are somewhat related chemically in the same group, but they are different compounds. They're not the same material with just a different name. And some of the characteristics of the DNA are yellow herbicides. Uh, they have very low water solubility, that is, they don't move in the soil with water like some other herbicides might do. They also uh, are volatile, that is, sprayed on the soil surface. If they're not incorporated into the soil, uh, they will turn into a gaseous form, uh, move into the air, and lose their herbicide effectiveness. They're also subject to photo decomposition, that is, if, if the material is laying on the soil surface and the sun shining, uh, sunlight will cause that herbicide to break down. And both the volatility and the photo decomposition are the reasons that these herbicides must be incorporated into the soil to be effective. Traditionally, uh, the yellow herbicides have been mechanically incorporated, mix them into the soil two to three inches deep, and they give a good period of residual control for weeds such as Palmer amaranth, uh, kochia, Russian thistle, and some of the annual grasses. In no-till situations where producers are not wanting to mechanically incorporate these herbicides, a material such as prow can also uh, be effectively incorporated with water. Uh, again, our rainfall is so erratic, it's hard to depend upon rainfall to get incorporation quickly after application. But under center pivot irrigation, this gives producers a real good option to apply a herbicide like prow, uh, put on three quarters to an inch of water with the pivot, to incorporate that herbicide and have it there uh, waiting for when the weeds might emerge. With the yellow herbicides, incorporation is the key. And again, the, the most effective incorporation is achieved uh, with mechanical incorporation. And, and it, these materials need to be thoroughly mixed in the soil to be effective uh, for an extended period of time to give good control and an adequate uh, a length of control. I think some of the failures that uh, producers have experienced in recent years, we often hear that, well, uh, these materials just don't work as good as they used to. And there's really no evidence that there's any weed resistance to the dinitroalin herbicides, but I think incorporation has gotten a lot sloppier. Uh, people try to have less trips across the ground, uh, just don't incorporate the materials as well as they used to, and therefore they don't get as good a control. If we are talking about something like Prowl as a water incorporated treatment with irrigation, uh, again, the rates have to be increased because this is just not as an effective means of incorporation as mechanical tillage. But with Prowl, you up the rates, apply an inch, maybe an inch plus of irrigation water as quickly as possible ap after application to incorporate that herbicide into the soil, and it can give you good levels of control. And to me, the, the DNAs, the yellow herbicides are the foundation for weed control and cotton, and that's where we start. And then we start adding some pre-emerge and post-emerge treatments to that to develop an overall effective herbicide system. Again, the incorporation is, uh, is very important on the yellows. Uh, if we're out there running something like a stalk cutter, it's probably, it, it's not gonna give you the level of incorporation and the level of control that you're really looking for. So really we need some type of a uh, implement that mixes the herbicide in the soil and then follow that with listing so we, we get two pass incorporation to do, it, to do as effective a job incorporating the herbicide as possible. Rates of the yellow herbicides, much like other herbicides, are uh, dependent on soil type. As we move from sandier type soils to heavier soils, we need to increase the rate uh, to compensate for increased levels of uh, clay and organic matter. Uh, again, most of these herbicide labels uh, lay out the rate structures for each soil texture, so it's important for the producer to follow those. And I think if you are uh, dealing with fairly serious weed problems, I'd want to be on the high side of the rate range and not trying to be cutting the rates. If it says use one and a half to two pints, I'd be, uh, I think you'd be better off going with the full two pint rate or, or subsequent rates for the sandier type soils. But don't, don't cut the rates there or you think you're gonna pay the price in terms of reduced control. Uh, it, it's often reported by producers, if we get a lot of rain early in the season, then they see some weeds that, well, my herbicides, my, my yellow's leached out. Well, that's really not, not possible. They're so tightly bound to the soil that they do not move with moisture. What may happen is the photo or the uh, microbial degradation is enhanced due to warm, wet conditions, 
And if it's uh, extended wet periods, really bring on a lot of weed emergence, and the, the treatments just somewhat get overwhelmed, uh, but they really did not leach out. And again, I feel like the, the yellow herbicides are the foundation of weed control in cotton. The second step would be pre-emerge type treatments. That is something a surface applied behind the planter. Again, there are a lot of herbicides that have been around for many years, are, are very effective on Palmer amaranth, and these can greatly complement uh, the yellow herbicides as well as give a little broader spectrum of control. For example, a weed like Morning Glory, uh, Trifluralin or Prowl have little to no effect on Morning Glory. However, something like Caparol, Cotteran, or Dyrex that can be used pre-emerge at planting, surface applied behind the planter, could help control these weeds as well as give uh, extra level of control on Palmer amaranth. We talked about the yellow herbicides needing mechanical incorporation. Uh, most of the pre-emerged herbicides, which are often referred to as white herbicides because the formulation, uh, they're mostly uh, white looking materials. Again, that would be things like uh, Caparol, Dyrex, or Cotteran do not need to be mechanically incorporated. In fact, they're more effective if they're not mechanically incorporated but applied to the surface and then some rainfall or irrigation can activate these herbicides. And again, they are not volatile or subject to photo decomposition that they will get away real fast if moisture is not received. They can lay on the soil surface for several days, uh, uh, maybe even a little bit longer than that without losing effectiveness. So again, right behind the planter, surface applied, if the pivot is being run, run around to uh, water up the crop, uh, that's certainly going to work as an effective way of activating these pre-herbicides as well. And again, the, the main, uh, with the yellow herbicides, the pre-plant herbicides, we really don't have a lot of soil uh, texture restrictions there. Again, the rate is raised as we go to heavier soils. With the pre-emerge materials, uh, producer needs to be a little more uh, careful in terms of what herbicide is used on what soil type. If we get on fairly sandy soils south of Lubbock, uh, of these three, Caparol is probably the safest and the, the main product to be used in those areas. As we move into the mixed textured soils around Lubbock or the heavier soils to the north, uh, Caparol, Dyrex, or Cotteran are all uh, viable uh, herbicide options for use behind the planter. Again, again very effective. Again, uh, I, th I think the pre's behind the planter is something that's really uh, decline in use uh, during the Roundup Ready era, but something that producers need to uh, reconsider to use. It's a little more trouble to be uh, uh, spraying something behind the planter when you're busy planting and trying to cover a lot of acres, but in terms of better weed control, I think it's certainly worth the time, especially since we're dealing with uh, resistant palm or amaranth. And these are the first two steps in the process, and again, uh, in most situations, I don't think uh, these are going to be 100% effective and there still will be a need for some post-emergence herbicides uh, to add to this. But again, especially with the weed resistance problems that have developed and probably are going to be getting worse, uh, we need to think of weed control and cotton as being more of an overall system and not just a herbicide here or a herbicide there, but looking at a system throughout the season to maintain residual control, reduce the number of weeds that emerge and reduce the pressure on the Roundup uh, with a number of resistant weeds. I think kind of to wrap this up, we need to have kind of a different mindset. In, in the Roundup Ready era, uh, I think uh, producers have kind of taken the attitude of we, we'll see weeds and then we'll spray them and control them. We need to go back to attitude now. I think if we use residual herbicides and never see a Palmer amaranth emerge, we've been very successful. Because the less weeds that emerge, the numbers that are resistant are going to be obviously reduced and have less uh, escapes to deal with as we move through the season. A weed control guide was put out by Morgan and others within the last few years that suggests a four-step program to managing glyphosate-resistant pigweeds in Texas cotton. This four-step program would include starting clean, being prepared for planting by applying pre-plant and pre-emergence herbicides, managing glyphosate resistant weeds as they emerge, and then lastly some remedial control options that would include spot spraying and hand removal to ensure that any escaped weeds 
do not produce seed for future generations. So let's first talk about starting clean. Starting clean can be accomplished pretty easily by tillage in a conventional till system. Tilling shortly before planting can ensure that when we plant the cotton seed, we're planting it into a clean seed bed. But with a movement more towards conservation or reduced till, strip till, no till systems, when the tillage is removed from the equation, then we're relying on herbicides that will burn down existing weeds prior to planting. And that can be accomplished by a variety of different herbicides and herbicide combinations, such as Roundup plus 2,4-D, Roundup plus Clarity, and a number of other Roundup combinations that would include herbicides like Sharpen, Valor, and First Shot. And I think it's very important to point out that some of these herbicides have a fairly lengthy residual activity in the soil so it's important to pay attention to the, to the plant back restriction that these herbicides have. For example, with the Sharpen, we shouldn't be planting cotton until at least 42 days after that Sharpen is applied as a pre-plant burn down treatment. And those 42 days start following an inch of irrigation or an inch of rainfall. With the Valor, that rotation restriction is 30 days, and with the first shot, depending on the soil pH, it could be as low as 14 days from application to cotton planting. The point here is starting clean. We can start clean with tillage. We can start clean by a variety of herbicide burn down treatments prior to planting. And these two slides would suggest the effectiveness of some of these burn down treatments relative to some of the weed populations that you can see on the outside of the plots. Step number two is being prepared for planting by applying pre-plant incorporated and pre-emergence herbicides. And there traditionally we're relying on some of our dinitroaniline herbicides, trifluralin or pendimethalin or prowl couple of keys to make those herbicides work most effectively is applying the appropriate rate for the soil type and doing the very best job we can at uniformly mixing that herbicide into the weed seed zone. When these herbicides were first introduced many years ago, lots of growers were using a two-pass incorporation method to incorporate the herbicides into the soil. And it seems like most recently, not only have we reduced the number of incorporation passes from two to one, but some of the implements that we're using do not do as good a job as mixing that herbicide into the weed seed zone. So we tend to see more escapes today because of the implements that we're using. And it's not because of weeds developing resistance to the dinitroaniline herbicides. This slide would show some of the tremendous populations that we have of a number of different weed species into the soil when we don't use a pre-plant incorporated treatment of treflan or prowl. In conservation tillage, it's a little bit more challenging getting that herbicide to, into that weed seed zone. Here we're oftentimes relying on water to incorporate the herbicide. And although water incorporation is not as effective as mechanical incorporation, for growers that are in a conservation tillage system, oftentimes water is the best thing that we can do to try to take some of the pressure off of weeds. In a conservation tillage system where we're not using tillage to incorporate the herbicide, oftentimes here we're relying on either strip tillage, incorporating the herbicide directly into the seed bed, or we're using overhead irrigation to try to move those herbicides into the soil where the weed seeds are present. When we're using irrigation to move the herbicides in, we need at least one inch of water. This would be an example of a conservation tillage field where 
the herbicide was incorporated either by use of chemigation or a surface application followed by overhead irrigation. From a pre-emergent standpoint, we have a number of herbicides currently available for us to use that will control a broad spectrum of weeds, including Palmer amaranth. Depending on the soil type, depending on the weed species, one of these herbicides is probably best fit. There are a number of different pre-emergence herbicides that are currently available for use in cotton that will complement the use of the dinitroaniline herbicide. Depending on the type of weeds that are present in the field, one of these herbicides is likely the best fit for the growers to control those weeds. So again, matching the herbicide with the weed pest and checking the herbicide label to ensure the appropriate rate is used for the soil type. And then lastly, it's important to point out that these herbicides have to be activated into the soil or moved in to where those weed seeds are trying to germinate and emerge. Caparol, Direx, Cotteran, Dual, Dual Magnum and many of the generics, more recently Warrant, Staple, and Prowl H2O are very effective when used in cotton. 